he was young, but it didn't seem like a big deal because he was incredibly smart and very mature. We began chatting as we both worked the same temp job one day, removing staples from papers for Citibank's shredders. He was wise, funny. He referenced the hoodoo gurus and read Milton during his lunch hour. Who was I to consider myself above somebody when we were, after all, working the exact same temp job? And who cares when you become Facebook friends? That's just a natural progression, right? You don't want to be rude and turn a person down for that request. Especially when you're new to LA, as I was, trying to meet people. Trying to make some connections. Any connections. The thing was, I never looked through Craig's Facebook profile. Maybe I didn't want to see any obvious clues to his age. I've always had younger friends and boyfriends, but I'm finally at the age where that doesn't seem acceptable anymore. So we'd converse back and forth in private messages, and somehow we were hanging out, virtually, and trading suggestions on music and websites, things you do when you're first making a friend and really getting into it, superficially. I was having fun. And what kept me rationalizing my communications with this much younger guy was the knowledge that he had a girlfriend. He's not chasing after me, and I'm not flirting with him. We're just friends. So it's acceptable and definitely not skeevy for me to be associating with him. <laughs> Our ages didn't come up. I was glad for it. Even though nothing would probably ever happen between us, there was a little spark, which is nice. It's still just nice to feel attractive, to feel cool, to feel that an awesome young guy sees value in you. Eventually, he invited me to go to a concert with him, his girlfriend, and some other friends. Okay, a group. Seems pretty safe. I wouldn't feel like a predator. <laughs> we would take a two-hour drive from L.A. to Del Mar to see the Flaming Lips. A Flaming Lips show would soothe all my anxieties. Forget being the lonely new kid in an unforgiving city in a terrible studio apartment. Everything floats away in the uplifting experience that is a Flaming Lips concert. Pure joy <laughs> as they wail about the wonders of the universe and as they rain confetti and balloons all over your face in an orgasmic musical money shot. <laughs> I have t-shirts, every album, and autographed posters, a framed photo of me clinging a little too tightly to lead singer Wayne Coyne after having stood in line for four hours to meet him. This sort of fandom <laughs> understanding translates into how all good fans should dress for a lips show. We prepare for a cosmic love fest freakout. We're new people in a new world. You try to leave old you behind. When Craig comes to pick me up, I'm expecting him to be outfitted in some sort of alien Easter bunny getup. But as I get into the car, knocking my purple glittered dealy boppers on the roof, batting my oversized rainbow-tinted false eyelashes, I notice that he's wearing the argyle and corduroy ensemble of a Connecticut vacationer. <laughs> He laughs at me and only says, wow, nice. <laughs> we make our first stop to pick up his friend Bobby. With fuzzy hair flopping in the breeze of the open car windows, Bobby spouts semi-radical ideas about politics, sex, and drugs. It's the rehashed stuff that circulates with every generation of people in their 20s and justifies kinky activities. Bobby and Craig together, with their vintage style and exuberant idealism, remind me of past days with my friends. They're an engaging, intelligent duo. But as we drive, I'm trying to figure out, how old is this duo? <laughs> I don't want to just ask because I don't want the question asked of me in return. At the time, I'm 35. I won't lie if I'm asked. I'm hoping they're 24, 25 if I'm lucky. It comes down to social acceptability. I'm feeling so out of place. It's different working a job with somebody, chatting with them online, and then just 
being in a car with them on a road trip, I'm painfully aware of the differences in our wardrobes. We make a second stop to pick up Craig's girlfriend. I was looking forward to this. What would Kayla look like? Would she be a Zoe de Chanel lookalike, heavy bangs and big black rimmed glasses, a bohemian Mary Kate Olsen, or is it Ashley Olsen? Or is it the other Olsen? Whichever one dresses sloppy but cool but doesn't hunch over. <laughs> it takes me a few seconds as she gives Craig a kiss, says hello to Bobby, and introduces herself to me to process it. The images I'm seeing all fall into place. A big house, two cars in the driveway, one of them a minivan. Hair pulled back with a barrette, and when she smiles at me, she has braces that twinkle in the sun. This bitch is still in high school. <laughs> Bobby drives. I'm in the passenger seat. And Craig and Kayla ride in the back, telling us about the upcoming prom. They talk about cummerbunds and after parties, and I sit, polite, politely nodding and smiling, saying things like, oh, that'll be cool. <laughs> I know that sounds like fun. <laughs> and I check my purse, making sure I brought my pill case filled with my nightly Zantac and Osteobiflex. <laughs> Craig and Kayla begin whispering sweet nothings to each other's ears, and Bobby breaks the front seat silence, maybe because he can sense my discomfort. Look, I know you're older than us. I mean, Craig had told me you were kind of older, but he thinks you're really cool, and he thought I would think so too. And I totally do. So I just want you to know it's not a big deal, okay? <laughs> I don't care at all. It didn't occur to me until then that I might have been set up on a double date. <laughs> he goes on to reassure me, telling me that even though Kayla's 17, she is about to graduate, and that Craig is 21, and that he's 22, and that none of them consider people's ages a big deal. <laughs> We're kind of a lot older than most people our age anyway, you know what I mean? And with this, he smiles at me as if I should now consider myself comforted. <laughs> I figure he's probably dying to know, so I go ahead and spill it. I'm 35. He nods. I don't know why anybody gives a shit about it anyway. It's just a number. And then he goes on to talk about Republicans and climate change and Walt Whitman and graphic novels and quantum physics. <laughs> and Craig and Kayla whisper in the back, and I go on pouting a little. On Facebook, I commanded Craig's attention. I could craft perfect responses. Out here, in this fucking old Toyota Tercel, <laughs> I was a 35-year-old getting ignored but getting a strange come on slash pity speech from a young hippie. <laughs> I'm told a little while later that we will be making a brief detour on our way to the show. Bobby just needs to make a quick stop at his mother's house, which turns out to be a 40 minute detour to the heart of Temecula. <laughs> and when we get there, I say, should I just wait here? Craig tells me, I might want to come in because we'll probably be there for a few minutes. Not long, he says, but Bobby just needs to make an appearance. It's his grandma's birthday party. <laughs> She'd be mad if he didn't come. We walk up to the door and Bobby rings the bell. A dog barks inside and the sound of laughter rings through the house. Suddenly Kayla says to me, I meant to tell you earlier, I love your fake lashes. They're so cute. I had forgotten about them. I had even forgotten about my purple glitter dealy boppers aimlessly floating above my head. As the sound of footsteps draws nearer, I swipe the headband off and stuff the dealy boppers into my purse. 
leaving the growing gloom cloud over my head to rain a slight glitter drizzle as we enter the house. <laughs> While Bobby, Craig, and Kayla may be totally progressive about age differences, a group of family members looking at a 35-year-old in rainbow lashes <laughs> hanging out with their kids are most certainly not. <laughs> with each, and who is this? I withdraw more. To avoid the family's questions and stares, I try to keep myself occupied by playing with or even just looking at their dog <laughs> the whole time. Finally, we make it to the venue. We meet up with more of their friends, the last three remaining people of our group, and they will be graduating with Kayla in a couple months. <laughs> All in all, it really is a good group of people. They're funny. And honestly, I'm a bit threatened because I feel like they're much more intelligent and aware about a lot of issues than I am. If my friends from back home had come with me, we would have spent time bitching about our relationships, our jobs, our families. And when we got too frustrated with those topics, we might have gone on to talk about the political issues that directly affect us before eventually melting away in puddles of emotional tears during Flaming Lips songs in between our grumblings about the sound being overmodulated. <laughs> These guys, they spend their time talking about their debate society, the financial situation in Europe, world religions, culling Twitter in the blogosphere, and they kiss their boyfriends and hold their girlfriends' hands. They're nerds, hipsters, active musicians. They remind me of high school when I was in it, only elevated. Suddenly I hate myself for not being more studious and proactive my entire life. I hate my elementary and high school education for not being better. I hate scientists and inventors for not giving me the same tools and technology, the same high-level brain functioning that these kids have. <laughs> Because obviously, the fact that internet usage wasn't widespread until the mid-90s is what has made younger generations snazzier and me a piece of shit. <laughs> they know so much. I only know books, music, shit, they probably have me beat with those too. Okay, I only have them beat with life experience. I can only take comfort in knowing that when they reach my age, they will be as bitter as I am towards a newer generation. <laughs> the concert starts, and I can't even pay attention and relax and be happy. I really want to. My idol, Wayne Coyne, is up there, and he's beautiful. And Bobby and Craig are making sparkling, hilarious jokes about their love for him, too. I don't know how to deal with the emotion storm that's going on behind my heavy lashes. There's a woman around my age who is being really belligerent, really drunk, had pushed her way in front of us and is carelessly shoving Kayla around just because she can. There's always one of those. And because Kayla is a small, shy teenager, and because Craig is such a modern guy that he doesn't believe in fighting his girlfriend's battles for her, she's getting knocked around like a weeble wobble. I try to politely intervene. You know, could you move over a little bit? You're pushing into my friend here. And that doesn't work. So a mild altercation escalates. You know, hey, we were here first. Why don't you back off a little? Why don't you shut up, bitch? The usual concert banter. <laughs> and my group looks on. Her flat ironed hair swings across tastefully exposed cleavage as her French manicured nails curl around a beer cup and she yells at me even more. Nice lashes, what are you, 15? <laughs> at that moment, I realize I still have my dealie boppers in my purse. I want so badly to put them on, yet I don't. Instead, as the woman muscles her way forward, I stand there and cry, and pretend it's because of the song I'm hearing. I even lean over to Bobby and say, this is my favorite song of theirs. It tears me up. My lashes are starting to come unglued at the corners from my tears. I'm jealous. I'm sad. When it's over and we head back to the car, Craig, Bobby, and Kayla 
are running and jumping on a concert high. We get in the car, and I laugh at Craig's joke that I don't hear. I pull my dealie boppers out from my purse and put them on and stick my head out the window. They flail wildly in the wind. I'm a comet, leaving a trail of glitter dust in the night sky. Children are so good at playing pretend. Jennifer Corley, everybody.